Good morning, 3C. This is Mr. Wong. Today is the 27th of April, Monday. Alright, um, so for today, we'll be going through last week's homework, plus today we'll be starting on length, um, just a bit of P2's work, and then after that, we will uh, do some work on length and also just finish off the running revision tool that we have over here as well. Okay, so let's start with last week's homework. <coughs> okay, um, okay. I drew the model for you, so it'll be easier for you to solve, but I need you to understand how did I draw this, so let's go through the models again. Okay, Anna bought a DVD, bought a DVD for $39.90, that's everything. I also bought a book that is less than a DVD. Okay, the book is less than DVD, that's why the book is a shorter bar, and the difference is $13.70. So I want to find how much she spent in total. Okay, so but in order to find this, I need to find the book first. So let's find the book first. Okay, in order to find the book, you realize you just need to use the DVD minus away the difference, which is 39.90. Subtract away the difference, which is uh, 13.70. Okay. Um, let's work it out. Okay, so 3990, 3990 minus away 1370, 02 decimal point, remember decimal point, and 2620. Okay, so it's $26.20. So that is the book. So you can actually update your model if you want to. Okay. So now I know the DVD, I know the book, all I need to do is to add them up all together. So 39.90 at 26.20. Okay, let's calculate that out. So 39.90 plus 26.20. Regroup the 11, become 1, become 16, regroup, become 6. So it's $66.10. Okay, so that's the cost of the book plus the DVD added together. Okay, so this is what I should see for every single question. The layout should be like this. So let's write the answer statement down. She spent... $66.10. Alright, okay, so it's quite simple because model is drawn for you. Now we look at the other one. Alright, so let's understand the question first. Jason spent this amount in May. So this is Jason. Okay, he, he meaning Jason, of course. Jason saved $20.50 more than the sister. So whenever you see more than less than straight away, you know it's a part, it's a comparison model. Okay, because you're talking about difference here. Okay, a part whole model cannot show the difference. So use a comparison model here. So Jason saved more. Jason saved more. So Jason must be more. Wow, sister must be less. So you need to tell yourself this. You need to see it for yourself. Okay, that Jason has more. Sister has less. So let's start. And then... uh. Let's see how much what they want. They want you to find how much they save altogether, which is the total. So you're finding a total again, like question two. So let's start. Okay, I know Jason saved more. So this is Jason. This is the sister. This is the difference. The difference is $20.50. And I know Jason saved a, a total of $45.60. Okay, this is what I know. I know Jason saved a total of $45.60. He saved $20.50 more than the sister. So they ask you how much is do they save all together, meaning that you also need to find the sister so that you can add to the brother so you can find everything. So let's find the sister first. 
So all you need to do for sister is to use brother, which is $45.60. Subtract away the difference. So if you draw a model properly, you would know that it's going to be subtraction. Okay, but if you don't understand the question, if you don't know how to draw a model, then you have nothing to rely on to know how to solve the question. Okay, so let's work this out. So $45.60 minus away $20.50. No recouping involved. Equals to $25.10. So you get $25.10. This is for the sister. Then after that, you want to find total. So all you need to do is to use brother plus sister. So $45.60. Add sister which is twenty five dollars and ten cents okay let's work it out equals to okay zero seven decimal point ten regroup comes seven so what you get is seventy dollars and seventy cents Okay, and then write the answer statement down. They save seventy dollars and seventy cents. All right. Okay. Um, you realize these two uh, questions are similar. Um, you realize that they can also be done another way. Okay, using a model. You realize you can actually add forty five sixty twice, so you get two of the same bar. After that, you just need to minus away the difference once you still get the same answer. Okay, so if you can see another way, you can actually add two times of JSON. So add one times, which is $45.60, and another times of JSON, which is $45.60. You get um, a certain amount, and the amount is this much extra, which is the difference here. So all you need to do with that, take away $20.50, which is to get $70.70. Okay, I don't want to explain here because it will take too much time, but... Um, that is the beauty of using model, you can use different ways or you can use another way to check your answer. Okay, so either you find sister first and then add together with JSON or you can find two times of JSON and then take away the extra part which is here, which is the $20.50. Both ways will give you the same answer. Alright, so this is a problem. Okay, now we go on to problem solving. Okay, so um, I kind of help you to understand this question when I have two shirts and one cap, it cost me $64.50. When I have only one shirt and one cap, it only cost me $38. So how can I find just one cap? I want to find one cap. Okay, so knowing that two shirt, one cap, $64.50, and one shirt, one cap is $38, I know straight away I can find the difference of one shirt. That's why they want to find one shirt first. A shirt, that's why they want to find a shirt. So how to find one shirt, all you need to do is to use $64.50, $64.50, U minus away, one cap and one shirt, $38. So when you do this, you realize that when I use $64.50 minus $38, what I get is only one shirt. Okay, so let's work this out, $64.50. Alright, once again, some of you never put the 0 0.00. So you realize you cannot do this. Okay, this is wrong. Because this is cents. This is dollars. So dollars must be under dollars. Okay, so remember if you are doing this, please add the dot zero zero or point zero zero thirty eight point zero zero. So this is important. Make sure you add it in when you do subtraction or even addition, you need to add it in. Okay. And then after that, let's find out the answer. Regroup. Come 14. 6 and 2. So a shirt actually costs $26.50. Okay. So the shirt costs $26.50. Okay. So now you know one shirt. How do I go and find one cap? You know one shirt and one cap is $38. Now you know the shirt is $26.50. So it's, oh, it's easy enough to find a cap because you know this, you know this, you can find this. So all you need to do is use one shot one cap, which is $38. Again, you minus away one shirt, which is $26.50.
Okay, let's work it out. So again, please put in the point zero zero. Let me highlight it. Okay, it's important to put in this one we never put in. Minus away twenty six dollars and fifty cents. Okay, because if you never put in, you won't know that you have to do regrouping. So you have to put in. Okay, zero over here. This becomes seven. This becomes ten. Ten minus five is five. One and one. So the cap actually costs eleven dollars fifty cents. Right. So in order to check your answer, uh, we can add them together to see whether the answer give us back the total again. So the cost of one cap. This is one cap plus two shirt. And if you realize one cap plus two shirt is actually your sixty four fifty. So one cap plus two shirt should give you sixty four fifty. Okay, so let's add things up. So let's add one cap, which is eleven dollars fifty cents plus two t shirt. So one box is for one t shirt. This is twenty six fifty. And then the other one is also twenty six fifty because one box is one shirt. And then if you add it up, let's do our workings over here. Okay, you can actually put them together and add up together. So twenty six fifty, twenty six fifty plus eleven dollars fifty. Okay, zero everything. This is fifteen. We group one. Um, seven, thirteen, fourteen. And then three plus three is six. So yes, correct. The answer is sixty four dollars fifty cents. All right. So this is to check. Okay, that's why it's called checking. Okay, you check whether your answer is correct or not. Okay, and one cap and two shirt do add up to become sixty four dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so this marks the end of uh money. So the next chapter we'll start on is length. Okay, so let's just finish up. Um, last week's homework, which is from revision two, question nine to twelve, just page three. Okay, so this is a number pattern, and some of you gave me the arrows. Some of you never give me the arrows. You realize this number pattern is a bit different. One to one, next one is five, thirty something else, and they are very big number. So you have to think beyond just plus and minus. Maybe it's multiplied. So let's try. One to give you five, you multiply by five. 5 to give you 30, you multiply by 6. So you see times 5 times 6. The next one should be times 7. And then the next one should be multiply by 8. So let's try. Okay, so 30 multiply by 7. Give me 210. And then let's say 210 and multiply by 8. This is 0. This is 8. This is 16. Okay, and it's correct. Okay, so answer is the question mark will be 210. So you need to look, go beyond plus and minus sometimes. Okay, so I want to see the arrow, I want to see the relationship. Okay, so question 10 after putting, nine, after putting 89 apples, so this is my total. Okay, so this is my. <coughs> This is my total. After putting 89 apples, my total apples into packets of 6. So packets of 6, what does it mean? Packets of 6 means one packet, there is 6. 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 I don't know how many of them are there. I have 5 apples left. So this is the remainder. So is it a plus, minus, times or divide? You are putting into packets means it's a divide. Okay, so all you need to do is to use 89 um, divided by 6. Okay, let's this one space, let's draw in the divide sign. Okay, 89 divided by 6. So if you work it out, okay, let's work it out at the side. 89 divided by 6. Okay, you don't need such a long tail. Okay, so 89 divided by 6, 6 times 1 gives you 6, bring down the 9, 6 times 4 gives you 24, 
and then you realize you have the R5. Okay, make sure you write down this R5. And this R5 will represent your 5 apples that is remaining, that is left behind. And for the answer over here, you cannot just write down here 14. You need to write 14 R5. We cannot forget about the remainder. Alright, so it's actually 14 R5. Okay, let's put in another color. So you can see, okay, so it's not um, just 14, it has to be 14 R5. Let's highlight so you can see everything. Okay, so R5 is your remainder. So how many packets do I have? How many groups do I have? I have actually 14. Right, so that's the answer. So when you do division, make sure your R5 is written here. Make sure in your equation, your R5 is also written there. Okay, do not just skip the R5 and just write 14 because 14 times 6 is not 89. There's an R5 as well. Okay, so next one. 6 cupcakes cost $16. This is important. 6 cupcakes cost $16. Okay, I bought 42 cupcakes. And I paid this one. How much change do I get back? Okay, so 6 cupcakes. So let's write down. So six kicks okay just keep it simple six kicks is sixteen dollars so if six kicks is sixteen dollars twenty four kicks how much would that be do i multiply sixteen by twenty four i can't i know six kicks is sixteen so how much is twenty four kicks so you realize over here six kicks to forty two kicks Realize you multiply by 7. So all you need to do is to find 24 kicks. All you need to do is also to multiply by 7. Okay, because 6 kicks as a group of 6 kicks, to get for 2 kicks is 7 groups. So if you need 7 groups of 6, means you need 7 groups of $16 too. So all you need to do is to use 16 times 7. And 16 times 7, if you work it out, let's work out by the side. 6 times 7, 42. 7 plus 4, 11. So this is 112. And all you need to do is to use $120, which is what you gave the cashier. What you paid minus 112. Right, this one you can do mental sums. This one will give you $8. So the answer is $8. Okay, make sure you put in the units. Okay, a lot of you forget about the units. Alright, so this is quite straightforward. Next one, okay, a lot of you kind of skip this one or don't know how to do this one. It's actually very easy. Okay, this is the most important part. If a rectangle is 120 grams, how much is just one? I just want to know one. Okay, so if this 120 means this is also 120, let's leave out the units first. And if there is 120, this block over here is also 120. And I know that they are balanced. Okay, this is balanced. If it's balanced, means whatever is on one side is equal to the other side. So I know straight away 120 plus 120 will give you 240. So actually, this big circle here is actually 240 because they are balanced. Okay, so these two are uh, these two is equal to this. Okay, so now I know now I can use this. A chart in this diagram over here. I know the big one is 240. And but the irritating part here is that there is two small little balls over here. So you realize all you need to do is to actually take away two balls from the right side at the same time also take away two balls from the left side. So now you know that actually if you count in total six six balls, six small balls is actually equals to 240. So in order to find one ball, all you need to do is 240 divided by 6 will give you the answer. Okay, so again, I know 6 balls is 240. To find one ball, 6 divided by 6 give you 
one ball, that's why I divide by 6 over here. And then if you work it out, I'll just do it at the bottom. 240 divided by 6, 0, minus 0. Bring down the 4, 6 times 4, give you 24. Bring down the 0, and the 0, 0 times 0, 0. Okay, so answer is 40. Okay, and that's why one small ball is your 40. And make sure you put in the units, which is grams. Okay, the final answer must have the units. Right, so this is the answer for the homework on Friday. Make sure you finish your corrections as we are heading to the last part of the HBL. Um, today we'll start on length and then we'll finish up two uh, work problems of round revision 2. Alright, see you tomorrow.